Hi everyone, this week's lab is on properties of water and I'm not going to demonstrate the lab to you, but I am going to go through the lab exercise a little bit and tell you some important stuff. It is also important to note that for the lab this week, you need additional materials that are not included in the lab kit. And it's very important that you have those materials ready to go before you start the lab. As always, it's very important to read the entire lab exercise first highlight it, make sure you know what you're doing before you start because you do have limited materials in your lab kit. So here's what the lab kit looks like for this week. It's a pretty small bag and it says chemistry of life, bonding and properties of water. This is one of the things you need for this week is everything that's in this bag. Okay, you also need to get some equipment from your principles of biology equipment set and we'll talk about that in a minute so you need to have this bag available also and then as i mentioned before there are also some additional materials that you need to purchase at the store or just go to a fast food restaurant and get a few of these things so the sugar salt and pepper that you need for the lab this week you need such a small quantity you really can have those tiny tiny little packages that you can get from any restaurant. So hopefully you can get those for free if you don't already have those items in your house. So let's scan through the lab exercise. Okay, all of this background information you should already know. We have already covered properties of water in lecture and so this lab is just really reinforcing that knowledge. So it talks about ionic bonds and hydrogen bonds. It talks about solubility. So it's important to know what that means. Solubility is the ability of something to dissolve in a, in a solvent to make a solution. So if something's soluble, it means it does dissolve in the water. If it's insoluble, it means it does not dissolve in the water. Associated with that is this term, term miscible, miscibility. And it's kind of related to um, solubility. The difference is miscibility is looking at the two substances together and determining do they mix with each other or do they not? So if something is, if the two substances are miscible, then they do mix. If they're immiscible, they won't mix. They'll stay as separate layers. So that's important. Also important to remember a solution is made of a solute plus a solvent. Let me grab a marker for a second. A solution is a solute plus a solvent. And remember that solvent is the liquid, and so it's not always water. In this lab, you're going to be making some solutions with a solvent that is not water. So let's just say this is the liquid part of the solution and this is a terrible marker. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to try another one here. Okay, so the solvent is the liquid part and then the solute is whatever is dissolved in the solution. So this could be salt, sugar, anything that's dissolved in the solution. Sorry, I have um, a message popping up on my screen right now while I'm recording. I apologize for that. I'm trying to be able to print from my computer and I'm not currently able to do that. So. Okay, let's keep going then. You should already know the terms hydrophobic and hydrophilic and how those relate to the terms polar and nonpolar. So remember if something is polar, it means it mixes with water. So just remember polar bears love water. So polar and hydrophilic mean the same thing. Remember, philos is love. So this is water loving. So po polar and hydrophilic, those terms are interchangeable. And then nonpolar, nonpolar molecules do not mix with water and they are called hydrophobic. Phobia is a fear, so these are water fearing. These do not mix with water. In fact, they're most often repelled by water. So important to remember that. Adhesion and cohesion are two very important properties of water, so make sure you reread this as a review if you don't remember. 
remember that adhesion is water sticking to water, and that's what causes surface tension on water. And then cohesion is water molecules sticking to other objects or surfaces. So make sure you read all of that. Heat capacity is something that's very important to understand, but we're not going to do activity four. Activity four, um, in your lab kit, you have some little paper cups that don't have wax on them. And the purpose of this part was to add water to one and then light it on fire and see how that differed from just lighting the one without water on fire. We don't want you doing that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a couple of times during this introduction, we are not doing activity four. You are not lighting anything on fire in this lab. There's no reason to do that. Okay, so these are the materials that are included in the small bag. Okay, so here are your waxless paper cups. You will not be using those. You can do whatever you want with those. And then when you open this up, you'll see that you have what's called a well plate. And you want to remove that from the bag. Sorry, it's loud plastic. You'll notice you can't put anything in here right now. It has a lid on it. So it's important to remove the lid. And you're going to be using this bottom part that has wells that will hold liquid. Also, this plate is already labeled A, B, C, D down the side and then one through six across the top. I actually went ahead and with marker, I wrote that on there. But I'm really clear on what each of those wells are because you will be putting something different in every single one of these wells during the experiment. It's very important to keep them separate and not cross contaminate. It's very important to use the correct transfer pipette when you're adding anything to this so that you don't cross contaminate. Also, don't reuse a wooden splint to stir anything. Make sure you get a new wooden splint each time. Okay, so that's one important piece of equipment in here. So you'll also notice these are the wooden splints and you have plenty of them so that there's no reason to reuse one. You have some adorable little scoops in here. They're so cute and tiny. And this is what you're going to use to measure your salt, your sugar, and your pepper. So when I say you just need a tiny amount, that little part right there is going to hold the quantity of salt, sugar, and pepper that you get. So that's why I'm saying that little tiny package you get of salt and pepper is plenty. In fact, I think you can go like to the deli section at Vons and where they have like a package with a, a fork and a knife and salt and pepper. Anyway, you just need a small amount. Okay, then you have two important chemicals in here. This is why you need to wear your goggles when you're doing this experiment. You don't want to get this in your eyes. Eyes are very important. Don't wreck your eyes, okay? Wear your goggles. Don't drink any of this. Don't let anyone else in your house drink any of it. Pets, children, relatives, friends, nobody drinks any of this. Nobody eats any of this, okay? No one puts it in their eyes. Be very careful. These are chemicals. So you have benzoic acid which is actually a solid, okay? It's not liquid. And then you have isopropanol, which I'm not going to unwrap mine, it's in bubble wrap, but you can see the picture of it there and it's actually alcohol. Okay, in addition to that, from the general equipment bag, you need to pull out your graduated cylinder, a beaker and two transfer pipettes. Okay, so general equipment bag, this is where you've got a lot of goodies. You're going to need one of these size beakers, and then you need the smallest of your graduated cylinders, which, well, of course, because I'm trying to make a video right now, I'm not seeing mine. And maybe mine's missing. You can use the, the next size up. <laughs> Let's see which one this is. Oh, actually, this is it. I was expecting it to be smaller. I'm so sorry. This is the one you want. I'm thinking of the, the next, um, we have a lab coming up that actually has a smaller one as part of the lab. Okay, so you want this one. Sorry about that. Okay, then you also want um, a couple of transfer pipettes. And these are these clear pipettes like this. You want one for water and one for your isopropanol, which is again your alcohol. 
So you can just write W on one and I on the other with permanent marker so that you don't get these confused. Do not cross contaminate. Use the one for water only for water. Use the one for isopropanol only for isopropanol. Okay. Okay, here are the materials you need that weren't supplied. And you don't actually need all of these because we are not setting anything on fire. At least not on purpose, okay? So what you do need is you need some type of permanent marker. And honestly, you can really, if you go into your general equipment bag, there is this grease pencil, also called a wax pencil. And you can, you can use this to write on your pipettes. You can also use this to write on your tray if you don't have a marker. And I highly recommend doing that. So marker is optional. You really don't have to have that. You do need some sugar. And OK, fake sugar doesn't work. You need actual sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide. We call it table sugar. You can't have any fake version of sugar. It needs to be the real thing. You need a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And those are all used for different parts. So you don't need a match or lighter. You do need some water. And you have a timer on your phone. You're going to be using a timer almost every week in lab. So you do need a timer on your phone. And then you really, you just need one drop of dish soap. If you don't have dish soap, you can probably use um, shampoo or laundry detergent, whatever kind of soap you happen to have around. It needs to be liquid and you just need one drop. You can't use like a foaming hand soap. It needs to be an actual soap. So, you know, if you don't have dish soap, I'd say if you have pump hand soap um, that is not the foamy kind, you could probably use that. Okay. There are three activities you're going to be doing. You need to read through the procedures first, get all your materials ready. You need a clean work area. You need to have about 100 mils of tap water in one of your beakers, okay? And then you can just go ahead and put your pipette in there that has your W on it, because you're gonna be using this to dispense the water. And then you wanna label things with either a permanent marker, you know, a Sharpie or that wax pencil that I was showing you. Oh, these are all the warnings. Please don't catch anything on fire. Again, don't drink or eat any of the materials. Don't stick them in anyone's eyes, including your own. Please wear your goggles. So there are three activities you're doing. The first one is on solubility, and it tells you what to add to each well. You need to follow these directions very closely in order, one at a time. And I'll tell you these. 12 um, instructions for activity one are pretty clear. This, this lab is pretty straightforward. Whenever you see this, it means you need a timing device. And again, you can just use your phone. Activity two is looking at adhesion and cohesion. You don't need to dump out your um, well plate because you can see we had A123, B123. Now we're going to have C123 and D123. You don't need to dump anything out. You can leave everything there. By the way, as you're doing this lab, you need to keep careful notes of what happens at each part. Write down your observations because you're going to be taking a quiz on your results. So this week you're not writing up a, a formal lab report or anything and you're not directly answering questions on paper. You're taking a quiz that asks you very detailed questions about your results. So for example, the quiz is going to ask you, what happened when you added sucrose to the isopropanol? What happened when you added sucrose to the water? It might even ask you, why do you think this happened? You need to keep very careful notes of your results, all of your observations, and you might even want to keep this handy so if you can remember when you're taking the quiz. Okay, adhesion and adhesion, same thing. Follow everything in order, keep really good notes and observations of what happens. You're not collecting any quantitative data this week, okay? In other words, you're not collecting numbers. You are recording observations. That's very important to note. Okay, and then there is an activity three on density and miscibility involving pepper, isopropanol, and water. 
And in this case, you know, it's telling you what well to put that in, D6, which is this furthest corner one. Okay, disposal and cleanup, everything this week can go in the sink. Please rinse it down the sink very well. Make sure you don't have any dishes in the sink when you rinse these things in the sink because you don't want to contaminate the dishes with any of these chemicals. Make sure that nothing else is in the sink. Okay, everything can go in the trash when you're done unless you want to keep this for some reason, but do keep it for answering your questions and making your observations. Okay, that's it. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, have fun and I'll see you soon.